Hey everyone, this is Mike from vSwitchZero.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to find your specific network card on the VMware Compatibility Guide. You probably noticed that if you start searching for cards there, there's actually quite a few different cards with similar names. Uh, for example, you might have a uh, Emulex-based card that's released by both HP, Dell, and there may also be an Emulex-branded one. So for this exercise today, I've got um, three hosts in my compute cluster here, hosts A1, A2, and A3. Um, they all have the same configuration. There's uh, VMNIC 0 and 1, which are an onboard NIC. I'm not going to worry about that one today. The ones I'm interested in are NICs uh, VMNIC 2 and 3. So VMNIC 2 and 3 are actually just um, the same physical card, but two different ports on it. So it's a dual port SFP plus card. Um, and you can see down here where the uh, properties are that the name SolarFlare SFC 9020 um, is actually not the name of the card. So I'm not sure where exactly um, that, that particular model number was pulled up from. That might actually be the name of a family of cards perhaps, but I do know that that's not actually the matching uh, card um, as it stands. So if I was to actually go into the compatibility guide and look for the SFC 9020, I probably wouldn't come up with anything. Um, anyway, so to begin, let's take a look at host ESXA1 from an SSH session, and I'll show you how to find the, um, the current driver version to begin. Okay, so on host ES ESXA1, um, there's a couple of different ways you can get a listing of your, your adapters. So you can do the newer method here, ESXCLI network NIC list and that'll provide you a list. Um, or if you're a little more old school like I am, you can do the ESX CFG NICS L, which will give you a very similar output there. And um, again, you'll get some information here. So you'll get the PCI address that the card is in the system, as well as the driver type. Now, if we wanna actually see the specific information that we can use to cross-reference these in the uh, VMware compatibility guide, what we actually need are uh, four different numbers. So there's something called the vendor ID, the uh, device ID, and then there's also the sub uh, vendor ID and the uh, subsystem ID. So those are four PCI standard values that are assigned to every type of PCI card, whether it be a network adapter or a uh, storage at, um, HBA, for example. So in order to get that, we can just run a command called uh, LSPCI, and we'll do dash P for uh, detailed PC, PCI information. And then we just need to grep for the specific uh, VMNIC number. So in my case, I'm interested in the solar flare adapter, which is VMNIC2. So I'll just grep for VMNIC2. And you can see in the output here, um, the first piece here is just the PCI address, which isn't really useful because that'll vary from system to system. But these four numbers here separated by colons, so there's two different uh, sets of numbers separated by colons are the ones that I'm interested in. So the first number here is actually the vendor ID, uh, sometimes called the VID. And that four digit uh, hexadecimal number is assigned uh, by the PCI SIG to all of the vendors out there. So in this case, uh, 1924 is actually um, the vendor ID provided to SolarFlare. The next piece is actually the DID or device ID. So this is 0803 in this case. And this would actually identify the card itself. Now, oftentimes you'll find that um, a single type of card, like maybe not this one, for example, but if you did have a more common type of maybe an Emulex adapter or an Intel card, there could actually be many different types of the same card, right? So for example, you might have a uh, SFP plus based card or maybe a, um, a fiber optic or a 10, uh, 10 G base T version of the same card. There may be um, versions that have two ports, four ports. It, it could could vary. So this might actually narrow you down to several cards, but not necessarily the exact card that you have. The next number here, again, is 1924 in my case, but this is actually the sub-vendor ID. And the reason there's two of them uh, kind of goes back to that example that I talked about earlier. So you may have an Emulex card, for example, um, that's actually released by an OEM like HP, for example, or Dell. So in some cases, you may have um, a vendor ID of Emulex, and then you may actually have a sub-vendor ID of Dell or HP, for example. And the last one is actually the subsystem ID. And this number 
can really narrow it down to a single card because with with the combination of the other three numbers and this one um, you will basically narrow it down to the specific device now if you're going to take a look in the compatibility guide chances are you're looking for a specific driver version um, or just to see if the card is supported but most likely you're looking for a driver um, in order to find the current driver that you're running you can run the following command ESXCLI network nick get and I believe it's dash n for the name and in my case we'll just use VM nick 2 since that's the solar flare adapter and you can see here under driver info this is the pertinent information so you'll get both the the name of the driver modules in this case it's SFC you'll also get the firmware version uh, and the and what's just called version now version is the driver version so 4.10.4.1000 in my case um, in the past it was quite common to use eth tool to get this information and it actually does still work so if you were to do eth tool dash i for information and vmnic2 you can see that you'll get the same type of output here um, the only thing to keep in mind is that with the advent of um, native drivers now uh, drivers that are not based on the VMK Linux uh, driver architecture, uh, especially in 6.5 and 6.7, they're a lot more common. Uh, ETH tool will not actually work. So for example here, you can see that VMNIC0 is actually running the native E1000 driver. So if I was to actually try ETH tool on VMNIC0, you can see that it, it throws an error. But I can still use the SXCLI command for that. network nick get dash n vm nick zero and you can see that it does return the information um, so now that we have my vid did and all of the other information let's take a look at the compatibility guide and look up my card so again if i was to go here and i'm just going to resize this If, uh, so when you first get to the compatibility guide, another thing to keep in mind too is that by default it's going to go to the system slash servers view. And you want to go to the IO devices view, which is where you'll find uh, network cards and other devices. And from here I could actually just try to start searching for things in the keywords or narrow it down based on brand. So if I was to type in solar flare, for example, you can see that you'll get many pages of results in this case it looks like there's five pages of results and i could narrow that down a little bit more based on name but again that's that's going to take some time and you would also have to know the exact model of card sub vendor and all of that whether or not you should search for a dell card or just a, an emulex card or, or whatever vendor it makes the card to could could really vary there so if you look on the right hand side here you've got the four drop drop down boxes for those numbers that we just talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and, and punch these in here and see what we get. So the first one was 1924. And I can even show you here. So if I do a search right now, I cl I've cleared the keyword. This should actually give us a list of all kinds of solar flare cards, which it does. You can see that there's a number of solar flare cards, basically the same as selecting the the vendor or, or just doing a search for solar flare and that's because that particular vendor id is associated with solar flare now if i go to device id let's change this to 0803 and i'll just do another search or update and view results and you can see that it's narrowed it down considerably. There's actually only two pages of results now. And you can see some commonalities here in the actual models. So when I did that, you can see that now they all seem to be 5000 series cards. And it does look like there's many different types of them. So there's the 5122F. And with the solar flare cards, I believe the last uh, letter in the model uh, denotes whether it's a fiber card or a, or a 10G based T card. Um, so you can see that there are different models. There's a, a 51, 
uh, 21, there's 5122, and I believe the 5121 is a single port, 5122 is a dual port, and so on and so forth. So it's not quite enough to get us down to the exact card. Now, if you did search for just these two numbers, you'll probably find that all of the models listed here use the same driver, and probably the compatibility information is going to be the same. But nonetheless, it does make sense to, to narrow it down completely if you can, if you have the information. So for the sub-vendor ID, again, it's, it is a Solar Flare branded card, so it's going to be the same, 1924. And this won't narrow us down anymore, but if I do put in the uh, subsystem ID, which is 6206, we should get the SF, I believe it's the uh, SFN 5122F, which is the true name of the card. And you can see here that that is the one that comes up. So I do know that that's correct. So if I click that now, we actually get the correct compatibility information for this specific exact card without any question because of the PCI um, cross-referencing here. So now that we're on this page here, we can get all of the uh, supported driver versions. Now, again, it's important to select your... Uh, correct major version of, of vSphere. In my case, it's 6.5U2. Sometimes there is a difference, especially if um, there's a native and non-native uh, driver that's available. Quite often, if you select uh, a newer version of ESX, you'll see the uh, native drivers listed, whereas you might get VMK Linux drivers in, in older 6.0 or 5.5 versions, for example. Um, so if I click this, it should be the same, I think, for all of these versions. So you can see here that the... Um, driver that I had installed is actually one release old, so it, it is this one here, the 4.10.4.1000, and there is a slightly newer version. I did want to mention one thing about the firmware version that's listed here. Um, this actually does match the firmware of my card that we saw earlier, which is good. Um, but the, the firmware version that's listed here, and there is a little note up here, um, is not necessarily a requirement, right? So just because it says firmware 3.3.2 here, doesn't mean that that is the uh, best or recommended firmware that, that you should use in conjunction with this driver. And I did want to stress that it's very important to reach out to your vendor for more information on the recommended firmware version. Um, quite often, this is just the firmware version that was used to qualify or test this, this specific driver. It's not necessarily the best or only choice that would work. Some of the vendors are very good about providing firmware information to go along with their drivers, like HP, for example, maintains what they call the uh, recipe guide. And that guide will give you, um, at any given point in time, I think it's released every three months, actually, uh, what driver and firmware combination they actually recommend. Anyway, I hope that uh, information was useful. Uh, please see the link below for a link to my blog where you can find more information. And uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. Thanks very much.